my name is Professor Rad, and in this video, we're going to talk about how you can change from scientific notation into standard notation or standard form. So as we discussed in the last video, scientific notation is a way of writing a really big number or a really small number, but takes a lot of digits to write out in a shorter or abbreviated form. So right now we're going to work through two examples. The first example is going to be taking um, the scientific notation format of a really large number and putting it in standard form. And then for the second example, we're going to take a bitty number and write it in standard form, just so we can see all these zeros that would be happening here. And the examples I've picked um, come from you know, uses in science. So we can see why scientific notation became adopted for scientific topics. So in our first example, we have Avogadro's number, and this is used to tell us like how many uh, pieces of a very tiny thing, like an atom, like how many atoms or how many molecules make up one mole of a particular substance. So uh, Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. So we want to write this in standard form. So to go from scientific notation into standard form, the exponent or this power here is gonna tell you two pieces of information. The first piece of information it tells you is how many, and the second piece is in which direction. So because this is a 23, it means we're gonna to have to take this decimal point and move it 23 times or 23 places. And because this is a positive number, we've gotta move it so we make a big number. So I prefer to think of it in that way, but if you wanted to, you could think of it as, um, since it's a positive number, we have to move it 23 places to the right. So I'm gonna start out with my 6.022. And I have to move this decimal point 23 spots. And as you can see, I don't have 23 digits here. So however many more digits I have to move, I'm going to um, just throw in zeros. So I'm gonna start moving it. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, uh -oh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, so I think this is where I ended up, but because there were so many movements and I kind of confused myself at the end because I got no rhythm of loop D0, uh, let's make sure I've got it in the right spot. So started here and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Perfect. It's in the correct place. So I didn't actually need this extra zero at the end. So then uh, I'm just going to throw in where my commas would be and then I'll write my final answer nicely without these loop D's in the way. Okay, so it looks like I have a 602 and then a 200 and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six groups of zero. One. There we go. This is what Avogadro's number looks like when we write it out in standard form. So you can see, uh, if I were dealing with this number a lot, then writing it out like this um, could be really confusing. It's really easy to drop a zero someplace. So having it in this concise form makes it a lot easier to work with. Um, also notice this is kind of similar to when we had percentages and we moved the decimal point two places because percent meant 100. And so 100 has two zeros. So that tells us we have to move it two places. So this times 10 to the 23 now allows us to say in a short way, move the decimal point however many places I want you to. And in this case, that's going to be 23. So let's take a look at another example uh, from chemistry here. Uh, we're going to write this number. <laughs> Uh, which is the atomic mass of iron in standard form. So uh, when you're dealing with atoms, right, this is the mass of an atom uh, of iron. That's going to be, atoms are so teeny, teeny, tiny. So these numbers are going to be itty, itty, bitty. So in this case, we once again have, we have a lot of precision here. So we have um, a certain decimal number here, and then we have times 10 to the minus 26. 
So what's different here, we still have a large exponent here. We've got our 26, whereas here we had 23. So that 26 is still going to be how many? But most this time we have a negative 26. So when you have a negative power, that means instead of being a super long number like this one here, we're going to have an itty bitty number. So in this case, this negative says instead of moving the decimal point to the right to make a big number, we're going to have to move it to the left to make a teeny tiny number. And we're going to have to move it to the left 26 places. Oof. So I'm going to start out just by writing this number. and I'm going to put it on the right because I'm going to have to add a lot to the left here. And here we go, I gotta move it 26 places to the left. So we have one, and then I'm gonna fill in my zeros at the end. So let's do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18. Okay, I made my loop D's too big. Let's try this again. Move even more to the right, 9.2732796. And we'll be a little bit smaller this time. So one, two, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-six. All right, now where each of these little cloud bubbles is, that's where a zero needs to go. So I'm gonna have a zero in each of those spots. And then just to make sure I don't get confused at the end, I'm going to make sure I erase that decimal point that was originally there. Um, yeah, and then I'll erase my little cloud marks, and this should be my final answer. So uh, yeah, we can see, oh, this one had a label too, this was kilograms. So I'm just going to throw kilograms at the end there. Uh, so we can see that this number is very long to write. It's like practically zero kilograms because it's point zero 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 and so on, nine two seven three two seven nine six kilograms. So again, scientific notation here, even though this looks like a long number because we have a bit of precision here, it's not nearly as long to write as this one here. One other thing I do want to point out, this is a common mistake I see a lot in my classes, is after you move the decimal point, make sure it's clear where your decimal point is and erase where it was before. Or like we did in this problem, we rewrote the whole number, right? So we started out, if I get an answer like this, where there's a decimal point here and a decimal point there, I'm not sure where the decimal point really is. So make sure it's clear uh, if you have a whole number that there's no decimal point written or it's written at the end. And if you have a decimal number, make sure you erase where it was when you started and you throw it in there at the end. So we've got a couple of problems for you to try um, to follow here. And of course, the answers are in the description box below. In the next video, we'll go the other way. So we'll talk about how you can take a largely written number, whether it's really large or really small, in standard form and write it in scientific notation. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.